Laura here. Today, we're going to do a virtual dissection of the lungs using Human Anatomy Atlas. First, let's look at the big picture, the lungs in context. Here, you can see that the lungs sit above the diaphragm and that the heart is nestled under the left lung. The diaphragm is the muscle that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. It's also the principal mover in inspiration, aka inhaling. When you breathe in, it contracts and moves downward to help the thoracic cavity expand. When you breathe out, it relaxes, moving upward again. Now let's move up to the heart. When the heart receives deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body, it sends that blood out to the lungs to get resupplied. So it's pretty convenient that the heart and lungs are close together. But more on the heart later. Let's get all this other stuff out of the way and focus in on the lungs themselves. We'll start on the outside and then zoom in bit by bit. Check out the multiple lobes on each lung. The right lung has three, the superior, middle, and inferior lobes. And the left lung has two, the superior and inferior lobes. Looking at the lungs from the back, you can see that their shapes aren't the only difference between them. Because of where the heart sits, the primary bronchus of the left lung doesn't slope down as much as its counterpart on the right. Speaking of bronchi, how about we zoom in on those next? The trachea splits into two primary bronchi, one for each lung. Like the trachea, the primary bronchi are made of incomplete rings of hyaline cartilage. They're wrapped in an elastic membrane on the outside, but a mucous membrane makes up their inner lining. The network of bronchi is basically made up of branches on branches on branches. The primary bronchi split into secondary bronchi, which are supported by plates of cartilage. The secondary bronchi split into tertiary bronchi. There are 10 in each lung. The tertiary bronchi are supported only by a tiny bit of cartilage. The tertiary bronchi split off into even tinier airways called bronchioles. First, lobular bronchioles, and finally, terminal bronchioles. Terminal bronchioles house the alveoli, the structures where gas exchange takes place. Before we talk about the alveoli, let's quickly go over how blood gets to the lungs to receive oxygen. Deoxygenated blood leaves the heart through the pulmonary trunk, an artery branching off from the right ventricle. It then travels through a series of progressively smaller pulmonary arteries, which sit near the bronchi. Fun fact, the pulmonary arteries are the only arteries in the body that carry deoxygenated blood, and the pulmonary veins are the only veins that carry oxygenated blood. Being a vein or an artery refers not to what kind of blood is being carried, but the direction the blood is traveling either towards or away from the heart. Eventually, the deoxygenated blood reaches the capillary beds surrounding the alveoli, and that's when gas exchange takes place. Here we can see a terminal bronchiole and the respiratory bronchioles and alveolar ducts branching off from it. Tiny pulmonary venules and arterioles run along the outside of the bronchioles and alveolar ducts. The alveoli themselves are clustered at the ends of the alveolar ducts, surrounded by a web of capillaries. Each cluster is called an alveolar sac. Here's the inside of a single alveolus. That hole there is a pore, and the slimy stuff lining the inside of the alveolar cavity is called pulmonary surfactant. The surfactant helps decrease surface tension in the alveoli, helping to prevent them from collapsing during expiration, that is, exhalation. The surfactant is secreted by type 2 alveolar cells like this one. The pink shapes on the outside of the alveolus are type 1 alveolar cells. These thin cells allow for the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the alveoli and the blood. You can see how the capillary sits right up against the type 1 cells, bringing the red blood cells in close to get their oxygen. Type 1 cells don't replicate, so if type 1 cells are damaged, type 2 cells will proliferate, or divide, and differentiate into type 1 cells to replace them. We have these green guys. They're called alveolar macrophages, the bodyguards of the alveoli. Sometimes they are referred to as dust cells. This is because they engulf foreign particles, i.e. dust, that are inhaled into the alveoli. And that's the lungs, from big to small. We hope you've enjoyed this virtual dissection. Want more awesome anatomy content? Subscribe to our channel and check out Visible Body on Facebook, Twitter, and the Visible Body blog. Thanks for watching.